All right, good evening, YouTubers. We're uh, out here in the shop tonight. It's Saturday night, I think. Yeah, Saturday. Uh, I have a long week, 60 plus hour week. Uh, I'm not gonna complain about all that, but I had some time this evening, and I'm out here in the garage watching football. Got the uh, Georgia Bulldog game about to start. I'm a diehard Georgia Bulldog fan. Uh, go dogs! So we're playing Missouri tonight. Should be a good game. Uh, so got that going and uh, we're out here having a beer so cheers all right I promised you a project and uh, probably three four six videos ago I don't remember how many that I was building a generator cable so I kind of introduced the the cable and my problem and why I needed it and then I said I wanted to go order parts and I didn't order those parts that night like I should have but I got them ordered uh, we had a huge Amazon week this week. Love Amazon Prime. Love it. As long as you do your research, you can get a good deal. So I got the parts on order. Been getting multiple shipments in every day this week. And I got the parts. So I'm going to go start and build this cable tonight. I hope. I hope it goes pretty quick here. So uh, let me show you what I got. I got uh, a length. I think it was 10 feet of uh, 10 gauge 4 conductor SO cord. S-O-O-W is how it's spelled. It's 10 gauge, four conductor, 30 amp cable. So uh, of course I'm gonna struggle opening it up here on camera. That's just how it works. Um, so bear with me for a second. They shrink wrapped it. They stuffed it in a USPS envelope too. It was kind of funny how it came. All taped up. I don't blame them. They, that's the cheapest way to ship it. Alright, we're in. So it's a uh, uh, 10 gauge. Nice jacket on it. It's got four conductors. You got black, white, green, and red. So uh, if I'm not mistaken, Green is ground, uh, black and red are your hot 120 volt conductors, so I use two of those for 240, and then white is your neutral, so that's what I got, 10 feet of that. So I'll need both ends, obviously. Next thing I got is a, I can't read it up close, three pole four wire locking plug and it's uh, 30 amp 250 volt and I believe it's an L14P I believe although I don't know why it doesn't say that on the box but I'm positive that's what I bought so let's look at it yeah. so there's the generator plug so you can see that it's one of the twist lock locking four conductor plugs. So that's going to be on one end. Yeah, L14-30P. It's part number. I'll put the link back down in the bottom uh, on where to get that. I'll also link to the wire. The next thing I got is a 50 amp male uh, plug. Right? So that's for the other end. That's the end that plugs into my house where my power panel is that I have wire or that the previous owner of the house had wired in just for generator input. So what I'm building here is a suicide cable. So what I guess I would say to you is don't do this. Don't build it. I don't endorse it. This will kill you. Kill you dead. Don't do it. Um, the other thing I would tell you is do some research and if you decide you want to do something similar uh, use that research to make a smart choice build the cable you need and just make sure you uh, when you go plug it in that you don't kill yourself all right so you don't want to plug in a hot source to a hot source so the power has got to go out when the power goes out you go over to your dinner or to your house wherever the, the the disconnect is whether it's in your outside power panel or your indoor circuit breaker panel kill the main power that way there's no there's no way for power to feed your house 
This is during a power outage only. It's the only reason to use this. So then that plug or your dryer socket or whatever you're interfacing to is dead, right? You don't want any power there. So then when you plug into your generator, plug into your panel, fire your generator up, now you got power going into the to the sub panel in your house. So then you can turn all your circuit breakers on in your house or off. Like turn your oven off, turn your air conditioner off, because you can't you can't do you can't power those, too much power. But your light switches and your uh, refrigerator and your uh, TV and all that stuff will work, right? Because it's being backfitted by the power panel. Anyways, I explained all that in my previous uh, my previous video, and my disclaimer is: don't do this. Very dangerous. Electricians will tell you uh, as soon as you build this cable, everybody in your house is going to die. All right. So enough of that crap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get set up here. I'm not going to fumble through this too much. Uh, I'll get everything set up, and then I'll come back to you um, when I'm ready to put the ends on the cable. All right, so be right back. Um, so just so you know what I'm doing here, um, while I'm doing it, um, you gotta you got to trim the jacket back one inch according to this connector. So for the, for the 30 amp side of the connector, it wants you to trim the insulation jacket back one inch. So what I've done here is I've used a knife and I've cut or scored the jacket all the way around. And then I'm just kneading it back and forth here a little bit so I can try to get it off. And then I'm going to split it just like this up the length. And then hopefully yeah, I can get this peeled off. Okay. So once you get it started, it'll start separating. And try to get that to completely separate. Pretty tough stuff. And there we go. So I was able to take, sorry about that, I was able to take the jacket off just like that. All right. So now what I've got is conductors that protrude out the end of the cable here, one inch. All right. And it's got these cardboard pieces in here. My plan is to cut those off. So I'll clip those off with some wire cutters. Get those out of the way. You don't need those. Just like that. Uh, I got one more here. Let's get that one out of the way. There we go. Alright, so we got four conductors. Again, you got ground, uh, two hots and neutral all right so the next thing is they want you to strip back the insulation on the wire each wire five eighths of an inch so uh, let me get started doing that and i'll come right back with you all right here we go so uh get your pair of wire strippers i'll put a link to some if you don't have them on the front of these they show you 10 gauge so it's the very top hole. That's what I'm dealing with. So five eighths is about half of this, right? Or just over half. Um, so you know, uh, when I when you, uh, eight eighths is an inch, which is what I strip back. So um, so you get on there, get your wire in the ten gauge hole. Make sure you're approximately five eighths. Squeeze that down and pull, and then twist your wire. All right, so there is uh, one of the hots. So let's get the other hot. Approximately five eighths. Uh, that looks about like five eighths to me. Twist that wire. Now ground. Oh, that looks about like five eighths to me. The wire comes apart very easily. 
Alright, so I'm good to go. I got. Let me get this cardboard out of the way. There we go. Alright. So I got ground, two hots, neutral. So I should be able to feed these into the connector. Um, I'm going to get one of them done and then I'll be right back with you. Alright, so it turns out uh, pretty difficult to do here with this wire and this connector, but um, you got to get it all four conductors in there, which I've done. And then you got to get it down into the socket as far as you can. And then tighten the screw up on each each conductor. So that's uh, green and red. It does not appear that I'm getting very far here with black and white. I think where I went wrong is I should probably have stripped off more insulation. But let's see if I can get it in there. Actually, I'm going to take a minute and I'm going to cut off another quarter of an inch of insulation. All right, that made all the difference in the world. So now I've got a little bit of extra here and I can get that white wire up in there. Tighten that one down. Uh, actually, a flathead screwdriver works better. All right, that's in there. So now I got black. So let's pull that out. Wind the wire around a little bit. Get it. Get it back in there. And uh, still doesn't want to go. Let's persuade it with some pliers. I think I got it in there pretty well. Uh, I'd like to shove it in a quarter of an inch if I could. There we go. A little persuasion with the needle nose. Score update, Georgia is a now up 7 to nothing. Go dogs. Alright, so it looks actually pretty good. Uh, cable's just long enough. All the connectors are tight. Hopefully, getting the connector back in here. These screws here tighten down the front.
so that got the uh, connector tight and I'm going to put the uh, cable retention piece on a couple of screws Tighten that down. No, I'm going to use power tools. Almost like the jacket of the cable is a little bit too thick, but there we go. Get her started with power tools, and then we'll finish up. With I think that's good. So what we got? 30 amp connector, 10 gauge cable. And uh, that that side is complete. So I need to move on to the other side of the cable and I'll be right back. All right, so step one on this other connector is we're gonna cut the insulation back three inches I believe. This one's going to be a little bit more difficult. So I'm going to go just over three inches. And give my chance, or myself a chance of uh, success here. There you go. So let's get these cardboard support pieces back. Get those back, get those cut off. George is up 14-7. Alright, so uh, the deal with this connector is all of the conductors have to be trimmed to a different length. On, I got a mess going here. Get these screws out of the way. Alright, so they say cut green first. And 
and they want you to trim back they want it to be three inches long and they want it trimmed back uh, three quarters of an inch so let's get a little look at that what that looks like three quarters of an inch So we're about right there. So we got that one done. All right, the next two are black and red they want those trimmed the whole cable hang on I can't hardly see it one and seven eighths the whole conductor and then they want them stripped five eighths so one and seven eighths So let's see if we can figure out how to do that. Uh, one and I'm gonna go two because I don't really believe them. So we'll go right there. I'm going to cut off the whole, it's black, I want red to be the same size, so that's red, and then they want them trimmed back 5 eighths of an inch, so let's do that. About right there. That one turn. Let's eyeball this with the black one, with the red one. Then white. I want the whole thing, inch and a half, trim back five eighths. So, inch and a half. Let's go inch and three quarters just to give us a room, a little bit of room. Let's cut that off. There. Turn back five eighths. It's probably pretty good. Yeah. And that should do it. Alright, so now uh, let me loosen these screws up and we'll figure out where to, where we're going next. Alright, so the instructions say put the white wire in, which is the short one, first. It's got these little clamping plates. You stick the wire in, and then tighten the screw down. So let's see what that looks like. Uh, 
That looks like that worked pretty well. So then I think next we want to loosen the rest of these screws. So uh, next it wants you to put black on the left side. Yeah, see I don't like this connector at all. highly dependent on the wire length which I think is a terrible idea so let's get this one in here first let's get rid of them Try to get it up in there as far as you can. Alright, next is black. That worked okay, I guess. Tighten her down. I apologize if you can't see any of this. There's not really much I can do. To... Alright, now the next is... White which I need. Whoops. We get that screw loose. Yeah, way too much wire on green. some of that off. The wire fed through there. that tighten down. Get that back in there good. Push these uh, conductors down. Make sure they're all the way down. All right. That looks reasonable to me. And we'll put our connector back together. Let's 
something tells me this is not going to go as smooth as, as it looks. Let me pause for a minute. Alright, so let's give it a shot here. I need the 3 long screws. Something tells me we're not lined up at all. Not much room in this connector. Oh, there we go. Contact. Cooking with fire now. So that got the connector on. Now we need to put the strain relief. Looks like there's a adapter here. these screws in, strain relief. Alright. Get these tightened down. And we are done. I'm 
rough slope here. Let's go to power tools. Keeping it real, folks. Got us a connector. 50 amp on one end, 30 amp on the other, a 10 foot cable, and we are done. Project complete. Alright, so that brings an end to this project. So, again, let me kind of describe what I got here. I got a, a cable for my generator over there. It plugs into the generator with a male plug. And on the other end of the 25 foot cable is a female 30 amp plug. So this plugs into that female plug. And then this end plugs into my 50 amp wall socket. And that will allow me to back feed my power panel in my house. So project complete. Uh, I'll link all the parts in the in the description, and uh, I would appreciate it if you like the like the video. Give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. I would appreciate it. It helps me out a lot. And we'll move on to the next project. So thank you. Have a nice evening.